Uh, hi, this is Mr. Rego. And we're going to find an equation of a line that goes through points negative 6, 3 and negative 1, 9 in standard form. So that's what the difference is. Again, we're going to write an equation of a line that goes through two points in standard form. Standard form 8x plus by equals c. That's what standard form is. Meaning, whatever equation I write, I need to have my x and the y on the same side. Okay? There's a couple of rules for this. A, A, B, and C are integers. Integers meaning whole numbers, positive negatives. So they have to be integers. So I don't want any fractions, I don't want any decimals. Okay, I want whole numbers. One more requirement. A has to be greater than zero. Okay, greater than or equal to zero, which means A has to be positive. If there's any value of X, any, any, any value in front of the X, that value has to be positive. Okay, so those are the rules to write standard form. Okay, now, I know where I'm going. I need integers, whole numbers. They have to add the, the number in front of the X has to be positive. Okay, now, how can I do this? Well, uh, standard form uh, is not as simple as the slope into the form or the point slope form. Okay, why? Because there's no process that I can go straight to get to standard form. How to get to standard form basically is by going through point slope form, or in our case, which we're going to solve right now, we're going to uh, find we're going to get to standard form by going through slope into the form. So I'm going to go through slope into the form. Slope intercept form, which is y equal mx plus b. Okay, so I'm going to write my equation in slope into the form, and then by doing some algebra, I'm going to get it from here to here. Okay, so let me explain how do we do slope into the form. Okay, uh, when I'm writing the equation in slope into the form, there's two things that I need. I need slope and the y-intercept. Okay, those are the two, two, two things that I need. Slope and y-intercept. So I need to go back in my problem and see if they gave me the slope and to see if they gave me the y-intercept. In our case, they only gave me two points. Okay, because they gave me two points that I need to start by finding the slope. So I'm gonna use the slope formula. y2, y1, x2, minus x1, okay? Once I have my, my slope, then I can find my y-intercept. So let's find the slope. So I'm giving two points. I'm going to label x1, y1. The other one will be your second point, x2, y2. And I'm going to plug it in there. All right? Um, let's do it over here. So m equals y2. y2 is 9 minus y1, which is 3, over x2 minus x1. x2 is negative 1, minus from the formula. x1 is also negative, so I put in parentheses and negative. When I have two negatives, that turn into plus. So slope equals 9 minus 3 over negative 1. Negative, I'm sorry, negative 1 minus negative 6, that's going to be positive, so it's negative 1 plus 6, all right? And I did an extra step just to show you that two negatives turn into a plus. 9 minus 3 is 6, negative 1 plus 6 is 5. Therefore, your slope is equal to 6 over 5, all right? And I have already the first one. Now I need to find the y-intercept. So let's find the y-intercept. Let's use... Let's use green for that. So to find the y-intercept, to find b, I need to have my slope, and I need to have a point, an order pair. I can choose either one of them, okay? It's up to you. You can use the first point, or you can use the second point. So I'm going to use this one, negative 6, comma, 3. And this is a 6. Oh, an ugly 6, but this is 6. Okay? So slope and my order pair. Why my order pair? Because I'm going to replace this information in my slope-intercept 
equation. Okay, remember, I'm looking for B. That's what I want to right now. I'm looking for B. So to find B, I'm going to replace the Y, the M, and the X. So this is X, and this is Y. Let's plug all those information. Y, 3. M, 6 over 5. Okay? Times X. In this case, X is negative 6 plus B. So if you notice, the only variable that I have left will be B. So when solving for B right now, um, the first step is I need to multiply this fraction times that whole number. To make it easier for you, I'm going to make that whole number a fraction, which is over 1. And how do I multiply fractions? I do top with top, bottom with bottom. All right, so 3 stays. 6 times negative 6, negative 36, 5 times 1 is 5, plus b. Okay? And now, uh, there are many ways how to do it, but now that I have a fraction and I need to cancel that fraction, I need to add that fraction to the other side, so I want to turn that 3 into a fraction as well. And not over 1 only, but um, that will be a fraction, but now uh, I know that by I need to cancel negative 36 over 5. I need to cancel this number, and I think I'm going to go next over here. Yeah, let's do it here. Even though we have to erase in a minute, but it doesn't matter. So 3. So I'm going to have uh, 3 over 1 equals negative 36 over 5 plus b. Okay? Same thing. All right, cool. Leave it to be by itself. So I got to do plus 36 over 5 plus 36 over 5. All right? These two cancels out, and I'm going to have that side B. So now the issue that I have is this. I have to do 3 over 1 plus 36 over 5. All right? That's the issue. So let's make it line over here, and I'm going to do the fraction on the bottom. So 3 over 1 plus 36 over 5. Okay, the reason I'm doing it on the bottom is because here will be too confusing. So, when I'm adding two fractions, do I, I need to have the same denominator. Do I have the same denominator right now? I have 5 here and I have a 1 here. That means my LCD is 5, my least common denominator. So I need, I need to have here, instead of a 1, I need to have a 5. How can I turn that 1 into a 5? By one number, <clears throat> do I need to plug, multiply 1 to get 5? I multiply by 5. If I multiply by 5 on the bottom, I multiply by 5 on the, on, on the top. So in order to not change the fraction, I need to multiply by 5 on the bottom, I got to multiply by 5 on the top. So 5 times 3 is 15. 5 times 1 is 5 plus 36 over 5. Now, do they have the same denominator now? Yes, they do. So now it's just straight adding. I keep the same denominator and I add the numerators. So 15 plus 36, that's 36, 46, 51. 51 over 5. So 3 over 1 plus 36 over 5 is 51 over 5. And now I have my y-intercept. So look, I have slope, y-intercept. All right. Now I'm able to write my equation in slope in step one. Okay, so let's, um, where I'm gonna be doing this. Let's erase here and let's do it over here. Okay, real quick. Um, now, the whole idea is remember, I need to write the equation in slope in step form and then from there, get it to standard form, which is my plan right now. All right, so, oh. I erase my slope. Okay, so I record my slope. And my slope was 6 over 5. And now I have my y-intercept, which is 51 over 5. All right. So we said that I need to go through slope in form. So I'm going to write slope in form. mx plus b. m is 6 over 5x plus 51 over 5, which is your b. Okay, now I have a bunch of fractions. Now remember, the whole idea of what we're doing right now is to get to standard form. Standard form, all of these have to be whole numbers. 
all right? And the x and the y has to be on one side. So first of all, let's get rid of that fraction. Let's get rid, uh, rid of that denominator. So because they have the y uh, has a 1 in front of it, so to get rid of the 5, the only thing that I have to do is just multiply by 5, okay? So I'm going to multiply the whole thing. Let's do, let's do this color by 5 over 1, okay? And uh, let me make a line, so make a difference right there. So to get rid of that denominator, because the 5 is uh, my denominator, I multiply by the reciprocal, which is 5. I only want to cancel the denominator. I don't care about the numerator. The denominator is the one that I don't want. So now let's multiply by 5, every single one of them. So 5 times y is going to be 5y. Okay? Then here we have 5 times 6 over 5. Here we go. Let me show you so we don't need to multiply the whole thing. So it's 6 over 5, okay, times 5 over 1, x. All right? That's the second one. That's what I'm doing right now. So the reason that I didn't multiply 6 times 5, 30, is so you learn how to reduce fractions. I didn't multiply completely, so I know that I, that 5 counts with that 5. And the only number that I have left is 6 over 1, which is 6. So technically, I have 5y, and 6 over 1 is 6x. You see that? That 5 will cancel that 5 in the denominator. Plus, same thing on the next one. Plus 51 over 5 times 5 over 1. Instead of multiplying 5 times 51, which is, what, 255, and then divided by 5, I don't do the multiplication. It says, all right, the 5 from the top cancels the 5 from the bottom. My answer is 51 over 1, which is 51. So that's kind of an easy trick there. Uh, that was the last multiplication. So I don't have to multiply every single number. I just can reduce numerator with denominator. Okay? I have this. No more fractions. We're doing great. So now, my standard form is 8x plus by, meaning a, x, and y has to be on the same side. x is on the right side, y is on the left side. I need to bring that x to the other side. So let's cancel that out. Minus 6x, minus 6x. Okay? I want my x first in my standard form. So it's going to be negative 6x, the, five, the y is positive, equals, this x is cancel, 6x minus 6x cancels out, equals 51. Almost. Am I done? x and y on the same side. What's going on right now? dx, the coefficient of x is negative. It can be negative. It has to be positive. So what's the trick? If I want to if I want to change the sign of something of a number, the only thing that I have to do is either multiply or divide by a negative one. It's easier to multiply. If I want to change the sign of a number, I just need to multiply times negative one. So let's check that out. Negative six x times negative one. Positive six. Again, I have to multiply every single term from that equation. Negative one times five y negative 5y equals negative 1 times positive 51, negative 51. So if you notice, the negative 1 will change every single sign. That was negative turns positive, positive turns negative, positive turns negative. And now this will be your standard form, 8x plus by equals c. All right, x and y on one side, constant on the other side. Whole numbers, integers, integers are positive or negative whole numbers. And then the A has to be positive. And now that's your solution. So um, we just did, we just wrote the standard form of an equation starting at two points, and we went through slope into the form. Long process, but right there you practice slope into the form in the longest process, which is having two points, all right? And then we did a lot of math right now by just turning the uh, slope into the form into the standard form. And we learned how to get rid of the denominators, okay? I hope that was good. I started, please. Thank you.